June the 12th, episode 17 of the Long Haul Podcast. Welcome, everyone. My name's Nine. As always, I'm joined by my good friend and co-host, Kerry. Hey, man. Hey, hey, guys. What's up? How's life treating you? Uh, same old, same old. You know, it's sunny outside. It's starting to get the heat on. It's beer time on the Splanade. <laughs> Have you touched uh, Diablo again, or was that just a one-time thing? Yeah, that was a one night stand thing. <laughs> we played for one night, and uh, the morning after, we were all, we all did the walk of shame and went to work and said, "Yeah, we're not doing that again." I thought about you yesterday because I opened my phone and um, I was looking for an application, and uh, Diablo Immortal was suggested to me by Google Play Store. Is 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 that even already in? Can you actually download and play that? Um, no, I think you can just like uh, um, you know be on a waiting list or a notification list, whatever. I think you can click it to to get notified when it comes out or whatever. Uh, no, yeah, you can definitely not play it unless I mean there must be alpha or beta testers, but um, that was not the case. Whatever, it just popped out on my phone and I laughed and moved on. <laughs> okay, that, that 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 was a smart thing to do. Yeah, a lot of stuff has been making me laugh this week, actually. So um, there was a huge leak regarding uh, Dota Underlords. Uh, now I was going to say Dota Auto Chess. So Dota Underlords, the mobile version was leaked by some guy who apparently hates Valve and hates Auto Chess as well. Did you see the video? Yeah, I saw it uh, from uh, Dota TV Russia. That was the one that I saw, and I expect that that should probably be the one that you saw too. I'm not sure. I just followed the link off of Reddit, but uh, must have been the same video. So it's just some guy saying, uh, "Oh, hey guys, I hate Valve and I hate and I hate uh, I hate Auto Chess." So I'm going to show you this video in lowest quality settings possible and just make fun of the tutorial. Yeah. So uh, the 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 video I saw was uh, someone uh, wait. Uh, he wasn't very happy doing the video, and he clearly doesn't uh, like the game or the, the game type. What I found really, really weird is he puts the, um, the game to fastest, where he puts the quality of the image on the lowest. And all the video shows the game so slow that I was like, people are going to play this, really? I know it's still alpha, and a lot can change. But uh, I myself have like little interest uh, in uh, the, the auto chess genre. And um, watching the video didn't just fueled my zero interest even more. Well, to be honest, I think the guy makes a shit job. If you have so you have a leak of a, a huge game that's coming out of a huge company, and I mean, you must have a shit phone or or why? So I don't understand why you would ever make such a huge leak on such a shitty like shitty shitty video because the video was really poorly edited the phone clearly had horrible quality um, and obviously the recording did as well but the guy said it as, he says it himself that he kind of hates it and he just uh he kind of bashes and then he ends the whole video making fun of, of valve but um that's just the that's just the first piece of auto chess news i mean i don't want to turn this into fucking auto chess podcast but uh, Riot Games announced that uh, they've also been playing Auto Chess and they're going to make their own version. Yay. Well, yeah, I, I guess it's kind of like, uh, like Box said from the, the DCL when we, when we talked to him, where his friend said that this is going to change the gaming genre and this is going to be the new MOBA, as in the, the, the genre that started from being like the underdog and suddenly everyone wants a piece of it. So my question is, how long until Blizzard makes their own auto chess? <laughs> uh, looking at uh, at Blizzard's take on MOBAs, I honestly hope they don't uh, they don't they don't try to make auto chess because uh, Heroes of the Storm ended as we all know it did. It was such a horrible game, man. Blizzard is is just far, far, far from their glory days. Well, I wouldn't call it horrible. I played it for a while. It was it lacked a lot of mechanics. It had some others. I'd say it was a bit more casual than the typical Dota or League of Legends or Heroes of New Earth. I miss you so much. And uh, and it was okay-ish. It was just more casual. 
yeah, I, 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 I really hated that game. Uh, in any case, uh, those are the, you know, auto chess news for the week. I wanted to switch back to our beloved long haul and the DCL has been going on. Um, I would say, you know, quite steady. Um, we're managing to launch all the all the events. Uh, the Sunday events have been quite cool, and um, thought we'd uh, we'd give props to the winners this week. So in constructed, we had CD Tiho, I believe he's Russian. I'm sorry if I mispronounce his name. Winning uh, or taking down the Sunday uh, qualifier event with a red black deck, and in uh, limited, uh, you know who won, did, don't you? Because I don't have the name. Yeah, it was uh, Enskath. Kudos to him. Sweet. Yeah, so congratulations to you guys. I hope to see you in the finals if I manage to qualify myself. I thought we'd have a look at uh, CDT Ho's deck because it's um, slightly spicy. Yeah, I looked at it. And he has uh, some interesting variations, which uh, makes me happy to see in a game, like decks that win not being the typical cookie cutters. Yeah, so I would say his flop is quite standard. He's on a triple red with Axe Bristle uh, LC. So, you know... Uh, Standard red flop uh, for the meta. Um, and he's got double black heroes in Lich and Tinker. Um, Lich coming in first, Tinker coming in second. And um, do you want to do you want to run through some of the things you thought were interesting about the list? Uh, you can go. I'll, I'll just punch in uh, my comments and my opinions whenever you bring up something I find interesting to talk about. Sweet. So I think a couple of things that I think uh, are interesting and, uh, in my opinion, lack from lack lack in in a lot of other lists that I see um, is, for example, the press uh, the presence of one copy of Slay. I think Slay, uh, right now with the dominance of red and red black, is actually quite decent to deal with Stone Hall elites and uh, bro Bronze Legionnaires and what are they called? The Marofell Brawlers, the big guys. Um, very interesting uh, that he also runs in red uh, one copy of Ogre Conscript. That's uh, you know that's a decent limited card, not a card that I've seen in, in constructed uh, much otherwise. So interesting to know why he runs that. I suppose because of the armor, but uh, but I can't say for sure. He also runs one copy of Burning Oil. So this is one of these decks where he's running quite a bunch of um, one ofs. I guess to impose some respect because the opponent knows the list, obviously. Yeah, I really, I really like that. I, I really like that we see decks with one of. I'm a sucker for for decks that have a, a lot of different answers, and it's hard for for whoever is playing against you when you look at deck lists that have like three of each. You know, this is how it's going to win. This is how it's going to roll. This is he probably has like one of those cards in his hand because he has three in a deck, and it's like the sixth turn. Uh, and when you have a lot of one-offs, it's so so much more unpredictable for, for the person playing against you. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the other side of, of the coin is obviously that you might lose a bit of consistency eventually, but uh, it seemed to work for him. Uh, my impression is that he's running only one Spring the Trap, so it seems to me that he cut one of those uh, mainly because of the presence of Lich, not to have uh, a two of a, too much of a top-heavy deck. Um, he's running a one of Red Mist Pillager, one of Enough Magic, one of Pickoff, as well as one of Ogloli Vandal, and, which I find quite interesting, one of Escape Route. What do you think? I don't know if he... Well... Uh... Probably the escape route is because he only he's only rocking like um, two blink daggers. I don't know if he used that because of uh, only having two blink daggers, so he could have more versatility on his items, or if it's just a card that he likes. But uh, I feel that escape route is like one of those cards you don't even see it being played much in uh, limited. So seeing a card like this in constructed is really cool. Uh, I, sadly, I was in I was in home on the weekend, and we don't have that much of uh, ways to see replays other than Twitch. So I, I'm I, sadly I don't I, I didn't see him play the deck, and I really wish I could, because uh, I would like to see how he drops the card. I mean, does he use it only late game? Is it like 
he plays it as a does he save it like uh the portal scroll emergency i i don't know it looks cool i, I like the tech yeah, yeah, I mean, it might be decent to avoid having your heroes killed by Bristleback. There's also a bunch of situations regarding time of triumph where you might want to relocate your heroes. Um, I think it's a quite a quite a nice addition. So I'm I'm uh, I'm surprised, and uh, theoretically, at least to me, it seems like it might add quite a nice bit of flexibility. Um, one of the other cards that he cuts down, though, is Bronze, Bronze Legionnaire. I'm very surprised to see only two of those um, because it's such an early game powerhouse. And he also runs a couple of Disciples of Nevermore. That I'm not as surprised because often it's not a great card to play on turn one or two. But um, yeah, I think overall, very interesting list. He also only runs black uh, initiative cards um, that might also have some relation with the escape route because he might need to reposition his black heroes to get um, initiative the following round if he plans ahead properly and regarding the item deck we see mostly standard stuff uh, a couple of blink daggers one stone hall cloak a lot of players don't play those anymore but he's decided to run one anyway triple face boots and an assassin's veil into a mall and one jasper dagger so i think again he goes for the versatility here and he wants to have apparently solutions for uh, most things, rocking the the Magic King Mall, the Assassin's Veil, and the triple phase boots in detriment of the third Blink Dagger. Yeah, I guess the Stone Hall Clock, it's probably for Tinker. Don't know if he plays it on anything else or if he saves it for Tinker, but since it's only a 7-5, I bet that probably the only black hero yeah. that could uh, take it. Yeah, that's it's quite possible. Um, on the other hand, when you only run one, you might run the risk of only purchasing it quite late in the game, and so it's way less effective. I think that's why people have been cutting them. But um, um, whatever, he got the um, the W, and he took the tournament down. So congratulations to him. And um, yeah, let's see how he does in future tournaments and if his list changes along the way. Hey, it's cool to see that. Um... In my opinion, the strongest variant is always the four reds and one black. That's my opinion. And it's cool to see that uh, actually two blacks and three reds are still uh, it's still a powerhouse, and who knows, it's still being uh, perfected. And we're actually seeing things now that since the game meta died early on, where people stopped playing a lot, and we got a stale meta, a lot of people that didn't really get to meddle with the decks and experiment much and it's cool to see uh, new decks and uh, little tech cards being pushed in right now yeah for sure i i also wanted to uh, mention that um, about 10 days ago or so i posted an initial statistical assessment of the uh, meta game of the first couple of days of dcl um, in the meantime, I've been working on that. And if you follow Reddit, you've seen that um, I've posted a second metagame analysis. Um, there were some, obviously, the initial analysis had a, quite a small sample size. And now we start to see with a bigger sample size and maybe maybe also a slight reaction towards the, the that in initial uh, meta analysis, uh, mono blue growing a little bit. Um, so I'll post a link to the image um, on the show notes. But uh, it seems like the meta has stabilized over the past couple of weeks um, with mono red dominating at 24% of the field, followed very closely by red black at 22, and uh, mono blue uh, went up to 15%. I think a lot of mono blue players, including Mez and some other top players, uh, were, were messing around with other things, and now they've decided to go back to mono blue. So those seem to be the top three decks. And then there's just a bunch of other color combinations as well as mono green and mono black, you know, ranging between five to 10% and the very occasional three color deck, which is slightly meme-ish. But um, that seems to be the meta at the moment. This comes off of an, of an analysis about, of about 300 decks registered into tournaments. So um, I would say we start to get a, a very decent sample size here. You know, the, the three color and rainbow decks, we should call it the Care Bear deck. <laughs> uh, they, were, they were really not very much. They were just like three or four that I saw uh, as I processed the data. 
What might be slightly more interesting to look at is also the matchup percentages. So, you know, like how does each deck fare against uh, respective matchups, uh, as well as the overall win percentage of um, of every deck. I had um, I had also mentioned in our Discord um, and also in the DCL Discord that I had mono red at around sixty two percent win rate last week. So quite a quite a respectable win percentage, um, and this obviously um, reflects on its. Uh, share of the of the meta it seems to be the most dominant deck at the moment this week and after processing about 150 games of red decks against other decks this excludes all the mirror matches um i have i have mono red at 64 win percentage again the overall uh, against the overall field so we can round that to 65 percent that's a very respectable win percentage have you did, did you manage to look at the breakdown and uh, were there any matchups that you thought had interesting numbers? So matchups and win percentages and matchup overalls. Let's see. Let's see the typical big boys. We got red and blue. If you play, if you look at mono red's uh, win percentage against mono blue, uh, we at the moment have like a 59% win. So as last week, we've seen the same thing. Mono red is still beating mono blue the smithereens yeah and this is interesting because a lot of the monoble players uh, seemed to believe that they had a winning percentage and, and it might be true i mean it might just be that mono blue in the hands of a very skilled player has a higher percent win percentage um obviously this reflects everyone that plays in the tournaments and mono blue is also likely to be a bit of a more difficult deck to pilot overall i suppose yeah the big difference that i see is if you splash a little black on that mono red, blue just kicks your ass all over the place. Because blue against uh, red black has 70% win, per uh, win rate. And that's a lot of win rate. Yeah, and that's a sample size of 25 games. So it seems to be real. It might be a statistical, uh, you know, statistical variation, but uh, it seems like mono blue does dominate uh, the matchup against red black. What I think is interesting is that red doesn't seem to have any obvious weaknesses uh, in this data. The worst matchup that we have is against green black, where in six games, red only won two of them, but obviously very small sample size. Otherwise, if I only look at, um, at bigger sample sizes, uh, yeah, I mean, red green, you know, is also at a disadvantage, but it's only 57% towards the red side. So maybe there's something there. Yeah. Besides the green black matchup, there's no, uh, there's no, yeah, there's no matchup that's below 50%. I know it's, I know it's a really small, um, it's a really small amount of games, but holy shit. How does it only have 33% against green black? Uh, there's been a couple of good players rocking green black, and I don't know if they're just doing it for fun or, or if they actually believe in the deck. Interestingly, now that you say that, if you if you look at green black versus blue, actually green black also is winning against blue. We're onto something, boys. We're onto something. If you if you if you see the green black numbers across the three top decks, so red, blue, and black red. Uh, the sample sizes are obviously small, but I believe the, the group of players who've been playing with this deck might be onto something because green black has a has a decent win percentage against red black, and it does as well against mono blue. So it seems to have a decent uh, win percentage against the top three decks. Maybe that's something interesting for us to look in the next episode, look at some green black lists. And I know the players who've been playing them, I can also speak to them and uh hey maybe they're interested and we can interview them to talk about the deck yeah, that would be awesome ramp that black baby would also like to mention that blue black you know this is the pet deck of some of some top players uh bok for example was here last week and this is his top deck but uh oof um oh my god the denial <laughs> i hope how to put this uh not doing great fellas not doing great. Um, 44 overall win percentage, which I have to say is also the red-black overall win percentage in my data. So red-black is taking down all the tournaments. But um, 
I have said this before. Unfortunately, it's quite difficult to uh, to make statistical analysis on the different types of red black decks. So while red black seems quite successful, the data is not is not super favorable. But it might be again like like uh, like I said with mono blue, it might be that the top players with the mostly with the most refined lists are just doing better than everyone else. But uh, yeah, blue black's not doing great. Red green also not doing great. Red is king. If this would be Game of Thrones, red would be sitting on the big badass throne, man. No spoilers. Yeah, man, don't spoil that shit because I don't watch the show and I'm waiting for the motherfucker to uh, publish the books before he dies of a heart attack. Well, uh, I know this is uh, not the correct uh, podcast to it, but to be honest, I think you're going to have to wait a little bit more because he's been working with Neversoft, I think. Well, the guys that made uh, the guys that made Dark Souls and they're making a game together. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. The El uh, Elven Ring. Elden, Elden Ring, I think. Elden Ring. Okay, cool. I think so. Yeah, that's cool. So uh, I'll let me, just give me a second. I'm gonna go back there and burn all my books. Just give me a minute. No. <laughs> And actually, um, that just that just gave me an idea. We could make we could make the long haul podcast a, a podcast about how George Martin will never publish the books. I mean, we can talk about it every week and, and discuss how there's news, but there's not, actually nothing happening. And uh, yeah, look, hey, hey, I can only deal with one heartbreak at a time. Okay. So let's 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 not do that. <laughs> All right. So I think I. Um, so let me let me put it like this, guys. This has been. I I had I put in a lot of hours this week to um, to gather and analyze this data. The the amazing people at the DCL have thankfully, after me whining a little bit, been working on making. Um, what do you call it? A widget or a program or a web page that parses this data. So hopefully in the future, I don't have to do this manually. And hopefully it'll be much, much easier to follow the progression of, of all this data and all these tournaments. And so we can discuss this um, weekly or bi-weekly or whatever in the future. But uh, this just to say that I don't think I will be processing the data manually this week. But uh, well, let's see what happens. Um, in any case, guys, if you're listening to the cast, if you're still interesting in art, interested in Artifact and you want to play, join the DCL Discord. Join our Discord. Come and talk to us, man. If you want to join the cast and talk to us, you're welcome to do so as well. Otherwise, I think that's it for this week. Man, you wanna you wanna you wanna say goodbye? I just wanna say uh, the people who are still playing at the tournaments that show up, all the people who've been signing on Patreon to try and help fuel this to survive the long haul. You guys are the best. It's really cool that people still fight for the game. We still love the game and we're doing this even if we're just limiting ourselves lately to talking about the statistics and this awesome tournament that DCL has been making. Just keep playing, guys, uh, and eventually we're going to survive this. Yeah, and if uh, if uh, if you're interested, I really wanted to shout out the DCL and ask that you guys support the DCL. Put in a dollar a month, put in a couple of dollars a month if you can afford it, so that we can keep playing until uh, the fucking 2.0 comes out and we can all, you know, whine again. So I think that's us logging out for this week, guys. Thanks for listening. We're on all the major podcast platforms, YouTube and SoundCloud, maybe if it's working already, and otherwise. Um, yeah, see you guys next week. You just sounded like those ladies on the radio that read like those pharmaceutical stuff really, really fast. <laughs> and no one gets it in a half. <laughs> well, <Okay>, guys. Uh... <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> guys, see you next week. Come on. See you next week. Later, guys.